You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the auction block All right, everybody. That music means it is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. You know what's going on in these post-NVIDIA markets? Well, let's find out together, shall we? It is time once again for the Option Block. My name, of course, is Mark Longo. I will be your host, your guide through this one-hour journey through the world of options. Of course, if you like what you hear, make sure you throw a like, a star, a comment on whatever platform you're getting this on. And... Coming soon, coming this time next week. Going to be a new addition to said platform, so that's always kind of fun when we, we add a new show 17 and a half years in. Network continuing to grow by leaps and bounds all the time, so stay tuned for that coming next week. Should be a fun one, putting all the finishing touches on that right now, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but look forward to uh, next Wednesday, I believe, when you should get a taste of that. Should be a fun one. In the meantime, though, if you want the full network, you know where to go. Every platform under the sun has it. Just search for Options Insider Radio Network to get it all. Nearly a dozen shows coming at you these days. And of course, if that's not enough for you, for you diehards out there, you want to get past the velvet rope, only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. If you did that, you would have joined us yesterday for our awesome pro Q&A with our buddy, Mr. Scott Nations. That guy, we can't keep him out of the hot seat. He'd be in there every week if he could. He loves taking on all comers on ball questions. So <laughs> we had a ball. We got deep into vol yet again. So if you like vol, pro Q&As definitely have you covered. Of course, options oddities at the end of the week where we break down some wild trades. It's been a wild few weeks out on that show as well. The place to go to get all that, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. As we go around the horn, 
see who's joining us on the program today. First, our good buddy is Thursday. Usually we're joined by the Flowmaster today, uh, but not today. He is on assignment out wandering the wilds of Yellowstone or something. I don't know where he is. He's out in some fabulous outdoor palooza, outdoor environment. But we are joined nonetheless by not from the Cebo East, but I believe Cebo Southeast. We are joined by Mr. Kevin Carter. Kevin, welcome back to the Option Block, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Did I get that right? You're the, you're the Southeast edition, Southeast branch of the Cebo, correct? Yes, I would I would take the Southeastern region for sure. <laughs> uh, that's fine. The Southeast <laughs> HQ of one. That is Kevin there on the Cebo. As we keep on rolling, getting a little bit closer to home, to the hinterlands of Chicago, we are joined once again by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tuso from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show to you as well. Always happy to be here. So, Kevin, you're the SEC Bo uh, version of the, the location for all the football fans out there. SEC Bo. How long have you been sitting on that one, sir? That's uh, that's 20 fun. seconds. <laughs> that I like good? that, Mike. SEC Bo. You know, if that's the case, you better be holding out for that NIL money, Kevin, because that's uh, that's good money out there these days. From what I'm hearing. Behind the scenes, good money in the SEC, Bo. As we keep rolling back to the south, that tinny voice can mean is none other than the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show to you as well, sir. Yeah, happy uh, happy Thursday uh, for everybody but NVIDIA. Happy Thursday indeed as we keep on rolling into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading. And, you know, there were two things people were really waiting for recently in the markets. One was some insight from the Fed and Powell, of course, at Jackson Hole. We got that recently. Looks like we're going to get some of the much-anticipated cuts. How much now? is the question. And the other big dog, the other elephant in the room was, of course, NVIDIA earnings. We had those last night as well. Some folks have speculated on this network that it's all NVIDIA's market. We're just living in and out there. I'll leave that up to you to decide, listeners. But NVIDIA, once again, really, really hitting, maybe not a home run, but I would say a nice uh, in-the-park triple or so out there. But you know what? Everyone expects them to just knock the cover off the ball these days. And when they don't quite do that, and when they say maybe in the future we're going to get another awesome, you know, in the park triple as opposed to a yet another grand slam home run, uh, they come for the stock. But you know what? None of that is, and it really, they really came for it in the after hours early on. It was kind of fascinating to watch those immediate fluctuations of NVIDIA kind of brought me back to the the heady days of Intel back in the uh, dot-com days post-earnings, and that thing would whipsaw all around like just a wild bucking Bronco. NVIDIA had shades of that last night. But coming into today, it seems like the markets have settled back into course. Uh, NVIDIA at least didn't crap the bed at the end of the day, so that's what they were looking for. So markets now mostly in the green. S&P up about eight-tenths of a percent. NASDAQ and the Dow both up a little over about 1% out there right now. Let's get our old pal. Small caps on the docket as well. Up nearly 1.5%, about 1.4% right now. So a lot of green on the screen. That means our old pal, Vix Cash, taking a hiatus today, taking a bit of a siesta. He's joining the Flowmaster on his walkabout. 15.20 when we kicked off the show. Down almost a full point, about nine-tenths of a point from where it was on the Monday show. And VVIX coming back below the triple-digit level 96 when we kicked off the show, down six points from where it was this time last week. Uh, but Kevin, as our guest and the honorary designee of the, what'd you call it? The SIBO, the SEC bo that's what it was. <laughs> uh, what's catching your eye out there in the markets today, sir? Um, you know, I mean, just again, just kind of uh, digesting all of these semiconductors reports that have come out and, you know, with NVIDIA coming out last night, um, it's just been an interesting space because you had SMCI with the Hindenburg report. So that was kind of, a, uh, you know, not a great report there for the space as that used to be, you know, one of the up and coming darlings there. So I don't know. It's like these semis have buoyed this market for the longest time. Um, you know, NVIDIA was decent, but, you know, from a technical standpoint, 120 is not a great level to be sitting on here. So um, and we've kind of backed ourselves into 5000 stocks trading as one called NVIDIA. So 
why we do that to ourselves, I don't know. But um, it seems like the market has a lot of, uh, you know, ties to that uh, to that chart of NVIDIA. So unfortunately, it's sad but true, but I'm still going to be watching that from my towels here in the market. So. And your buddy, the Flowmaster, he did send in a, a nugget that he just posted on the SIBO website, it looks like yesterday. So hot off the presses, listeners. It's called Flex Appeal. Your boy, the Flowmaster. A lot of people behind the scenes have been whispering to me these days. The sweet nothings of Flex. Everyone's all hot and bothered about Flex again. I told you I came back from the OIC conference this year, listeners, with just, just surprised how many people were all excited about all things flex and account the flow master among them. He, he posted an interesting blog post. You can check it out. Like I said, on the SIBO website listeners called flex appeal, enhanced flex functionality on SIBO platforms and data. And just a couple interesting nuggets here to, to call out here. Uh, he's been talking for a while about how flex is growing, uh, but he actually crunched the numbers for us here. Uh, flex volume growing 26% annually. So, outpacing the broad options market as a whole, and obviously coming from a smaller baseline, but still, that's impressive. Uh, 60,000 contracts a day, that was, that was the volume back just a decade ago. Uh, nearly a million now, 800,000 contracts a day so far this year. And in terms of market share, Flex now makes up nearly 2% of total listed options volume with peak days uh, topping 4% of overall market. So. Flex becoming more of a of a relevant player these days. Uh, Kevin, uh, did you notice uh, the Flowmasters Flex Palooza blog post here, sir? And what are your thoughts? Um, I, you know, honestly, I haven't gotten a chance to read it just uh, just yet. But I'm with you. Um, you know, it, it, you know, growing you know, starting this business, flexes weren't that uh, utilized, and they've certainly came back uh, boring here. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of it is probably due to the, you know, the birth of a lot of these defined uh, ETFs, you know, defined outcome ETFs. I think they're they're utilizing flex to build those. Um, you know, obviously you can you can tie a flex to a European exercise, so that's that's really a convenient uh, part there for those that don't want to have any tax consequences. So. I think the benefits of flex are now being recognized for some of these vehicles that they're being used in. So. Yeah, he blew my mind when he told me a few months ago that in some names, obviously smaller names like Nicola, but still you're seeing Flex outpace the listed options volume someday. That to me was a just a sea change. I had never even seen something like that before. So a fascinating stuff. Flex, apparently everything old, everything from uh, 2001 is, is new again, listeners. Intel in our top 10 again. And now, of course, Flex lighting up the tape as we keep rolling. Let's go out to... The Southern Volatility Mecca. Mr. Meatball, I know you're slinging a ton of flex over there when you're not talking to me, uh, but what's catching your eye out there in the markets these days, sir? Well, yeah, you know, um, I did a little bit of a dive on, you'll love this, I actually did uh, data work, Mark. So I decided to look at every instance where NVIDIA was pricing in over an 8% move. And um, since 2011, this was the 13th instance where that had happened. So it's a small data set. Um, so the 12 that we had the outcome of, of those 12, three times it had moved more than expected. Nine times it had moved less than expected. Five times it went up, five times it went down, and twice it, it was unchanged. I defined unchanged as up or down less than 1%. Um, and when it did move more though, it moved almost two X the expected move. Um, but all things being said, this kind of adds fuel to fire when the straddle gets, when the earnings straddle gets really juiced in NVIDIA, um, it is either going to really, really, really move or kind of fizzle. And today appears to be a bit of a fizzle. And, you know, we called NVIDIA the vampire, well, with NVIDIA not kind of having the life sucked out of it, what is what what happens? Well, it lets Amazon go up. It lets Apple go go up. Apple is booming higher. I don't know what Apple did to deserve being up. What changed yesterday between yesterday and today that Apple needs to be up another two and a half dollars? Um, Meta's up. Microsoft is up 1.86 percent. Uh, GE looking strong. The bank stocks are going up. Basically, if you're not NVIDIA, you're green today. 
uh, NVIDIA on, you know, everything is going up except, uh, except our friend NVIDIA. We did have a couple other earnings that were last night. The one I was kind of paying close attention to was CrowdStrike. You know, after their debacle last month, I wanted to kind of hear whether, um, you know, how they were coming out of it. And lo and behold, the stock uh, up about 5%, still less than they were pricing in, but uh, looks pretty positive. And the other one, and Mark, they, they had to know something was going on because what they were doing into uh, a firm earnings, AFRM, they were buying um, risk reversals ahead of earnings. So they were selling like the September 25 and 26 puts and they were buying the 32 and $33 calls and the stock's up 10 bucks today. So somebody somebody had a good feeling a firm was going to report something nice. Because you always see that going into earnings. You see size bullish risk reversal paper <laughs> every week. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Every so, single time. So maybe maybe the cat was out of the bag in that one out there. How dare you allege something like that? How dare you allege skullduggery in the world of options? Never one to commit skullduggery himself is Uncle Mike Tucson. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, it's a mostly Uncle Mike type of day unless you're hanging out in NVIDIA, which is... Weird to say out loud. How often have we said that where NVIDIA is the one down name on the day? That's certainly kind of strange. But Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what's catching your eye out there? And an Uncle Mike type of day, unless you're sitting on a boatload of NVIDIA. Yeah, it is kind of unique that uh, everything is up at NVIDIA. You, like in the Mag 7, everything is up at NVIDIA. And uh, uh, was not expected. Typically, you don't see a day like this. And uh, it's, uh, it kind of feels like maybe the show about seven or eight years ago when Apple was up 5%. And uh, Mark Sebastian says, why is Apple up this, or Apple's up $5 on the day? Why is Apple up on the day? And then my reply would always be, because it's Apple. And so I really don't know why Apple's up $5 on the day. Uh, yes, it is Apple, but I don't think that's the reason why anymore. It, just for being Apple doesn't make you go up like that anymore. I don't think anyway. But uh, nonetheless, I uh, had some flashback moments to episodes 200 through 400 of our show and what we would always seem to talk about at the beginning of it. Uh, so with the S&P up 56.35 we're at right now, uh, we are just a hop, skip, and a jump back from the all-time highs again. And uh, I, I think what it's coming going to come down to is, is the Fed going to – cut 25 bips or 50 bips or nothing at all. Uh, I think it's going to be 25 bips in the next at their next meeting uh, based on what uh, Paul was saying in Jackson Hole, but I could be wrong. Uh, they change their minds a lot. And uh, one thing that I've noticed through the years is I typically don't get what I want from the Fed uh, when they're listening to this show. So um, Mr. Powell, I'd like to ask that you uh, start listening to what we have to say a little bit more as you're listening, which I'm sure you uh, you are. Uh, in terms of some stocks that are moving a lot today, uh, mainly I'm just looking up and down my screen and uh, everything <laughs> except for NVIDIA. So we're getting uh, pretty decent movement everywhere on a, what I would call a broad-based rally minus NVIDIA. And uh, that's kind of what I'm seeing right now. Uh, the, the other thing to note it just as I'm looking at this and as we're approaching all time highs again, we actually survived a four and a half percent dip in one day a few weeks ago on the August 5th dip. Uh, and uh, we're, we're getting right back to all time highs again rather quickly. So this is a pretty strong market right now. I know I definitely would not be wanting to be standing in the way of it. However, we haven't made new all time highs yet. And so until then, uh, be careful out there, folks, to steal a line from my co-host. Say you're stealing the clothes. Of my is the show over? Can I go home? Is it, is it already done? All right. Well, uh, interesting stuff out there. You know, it's, it's interesting times, and Uncle Mike is telling you to be careful out there, listeners. Let's see what kind of careful markets we have out there today. And again, it's kind of a, a mixed bag out there, depending where you hang your hat. Uh, nothing really super explosive today. In the past, usually we've had one or two of these names kind of really lighting it up. Not so much today. Uh, for example, VIX, only 361,000 contracts on the tape. Now, I've said it before. I will say it again. This time of year, that's the kind of volume we expect. But when the ADV is nearly 1.2 million, it needs to be lighting up the tape, nearly double that to really uh, keep pace out there. So VIX looking kind of sleepy out there today, post NVIDIA. SPY, same deal, pretty much right around, actually a little bit lighter than we expect it to be. Usually expect it to be around 4.3 million or so. It's about 4.2, so... 
pretty close, a little light out there. The ADB 8.1 million out there. The S, same deal, a little light out there as well. A little over one and a half million contracts on the tape. We expect about one and three quarters right now. And the ADB is a little over three, about 3.1 million contracts out there. So the S looking a little light, a little sleepy out there right now as well. But again, it could catch up later on the session. Small cap, 711,000 contracts. The ADB about 1.6 million. So it's got a little ways to go out there as well. And the Q's. One of the few that's looking a little bit stronger right now. Usually expect the Qs to be around 2.2, two and a quarter. This time a show. This time they're closing in on two and a half, about 2.42 million right now. So a little bit more paper out there in the Qs right now. The ADB, 3.85 million contracts. So it's got a little ways to go in the Qs as we go on out to the single names. Is it a banger single name day, listeners? Well, the answer is, you know, it's, it's respectable. And especially, again, given the context, given where it is this time of year, Seasonally speaking, 242,000 is nothing to sneeze at. That gets us to our old pal, Pin Duo Duo. You'll remember earlier this week, listeners, they kind of fell out of bed and there was a ton, a metric ton of put buying going on out there. Well, they're managing to slowly claw their way back a little bit. It looks like they took them down all the way to about 88 bucks yesterday, by the way, going into their announcement. Going into the last week, they were 140. So they crushed them all the way down to 88 bucks. That was on Wednesday. And now they've slowly managed to claw their way back. Well, not that slowly today, up nearly five bucks today. All right, so they're back to about 94 bucks, up about 5% today. So Pin Duo Duo, after getting just their legs cut out from under them, slowly managing to at least get up on one elbow right now. A good for 242,000 contracts. And the number 10 spot today, number nine. Again, it seems like it's kind of glued right here around this number nine spot these days. It's Intel. Uh, 2038 up about 77 cents or nearly 4% today. So once again, everything old is new again. Intel managing to keep its spot in the top 10 these days, which is kind of interesting. Number nine, 242,000 contracts. On uh, number eight, this is a perennial top tenner. This is good old SMCI. Another one kind of everything old is, is new again. 455, 12, up about 1163, about 2.6% today. So Obviously, in the post-NVIDIA blush, they're feeling, feeling a little bit of love, even though just on Tuesday, they really took this one to the woodshed as well. They were 540 on Tuesday, and then they crushed them all the way below 400, 399 just yesterday. So they've had quite the, uh, quite the 48 hours out there, and now back to 453 out there. So my goodness, they've swung 155 handles or 25% just in the past five days. They actually were over 600 at the end of last week, 621. So a wild week for SMCI. Good for number eight today, 253,000 contracts. Uh, number seven, here comes our A tech swath listeners. It's the Amazonians kicking it off. 262 for the number seven spot, trading 173 and about a half, up about 266 or about one and a half percent today. So they participating in the post-NVIDIA Largesse that seems to be just lifting the rest of the market today. Number six, keeping it in the A tech names. It's AMD, three hundred and twenty thousand contracts trading one forty seven sixty four up about a buck thirty or a little bit shy of one percent for AMD. So I guess I won't say bad, but kind of eh, news for Nvidia in terms of outlook doesn't seem to be weighing on AMD. And number five, the aforementioned affirmed the meatballs favorite uh, ticker symbol AFRM. Don't see them in the top 10 too often, listeners, unless perhaps there's some skullduggery about 368,000 contracts and the number five spot today, up 10 and a half bucks or 33%. The meatball was talking about some risk reversals going up earlier this week. Let's just see what folks are up to today. I'm going to guess there's a whole bunch of call buying if past is prologue. Let's see. We've got no 45s going up 3,000 times for four and a half bucks, man. They're not messing around. That's a 78 vol on those bad boys. Oc 42 halves. Looks like somebody bailing on those for three and a half bucks. Oh, Aug 40 puts expiring tomorrow. Oh, in fact, you know what? I do believe I'm spoiling. I'm spoiling some of our odd blogs. So I will stop digging because I do believe they were on. They were on our list as well. But 2400 of the Aug 40 puts expiring tomorrow. Somebody gobbling those up for 33 cents today. So. 
one day turnaround out there in a firm. And things up almost 11 handles today. So it's anyone's guess what's going to happen tomorrow. But uh, an intriguing paper out there for a firm today coming in at the number five spot here. For a firm number four, it's SoFi listeners. Because when you think post NVIDIA, you th- of course think SoFi listeners. Number four, 413,000 contracts. SoFi right now, 818, up about 70 cents, so a little over 9%. So a good day for SoFi out there. Number three, we're just talking about them. It's the fruit company just feeling their oats today. 232 even, up five and a half bucks or about two and a half percent. Again, riddle me that one. I guess folks are rotating out of NVIDIA and into Apple. More buyers than sellers, kid. That's what the answer is out there. Number three, Apple. Over a million contracts. I haven't seen that in a while on Apple either. So Apple, just a banger post NVIDIA. That, that's a strange one. 1.01 million contracts on the tape for the fruit company. Number two, it's Tesla, 211.64, up about six bucks or nearly 3%. Because why not? It's Tesla, day that ends in Y. 1.04 million, just, just barely managing to eke past Apple today. Don't see that too often. And then the big dog, you know what it is, a little bit bigger today, NVIDIA, 4.88 million. But then again, post earnings, we've seen NVIDIA get up to nearly 11 million contracts in the past. So 4.88, obviously the day's not over, but actually kind of like given expectations out there, which kind of tracks, I guess, with NVIDIA's earnings. NVIDIA right now, 120.70 off about five bucks or nearly 4%. I know they crushed it down to about 119, I think, in, in the after hours. Actually, got to 115 in the after hours very briefly. So, yeah, they, they came for it and managed to rally and uh, opened around, uh, you know, a little bit north of 120, about 123. And then they're continuing to come for it now. Good for nearly 5 million contracts today, 4.9 million. Uh, earning season, that was kind of the big dog, the big bullet left in the chamber out there, listeners, for uh, earnings season. Uh, the rest of it, I mean, you could be excited about Chewy, maybe Salesforce or Five Below. Uh, Today, Best Buy also kind of crushing it today as well. How many years have people been tolling the death knell of Best Buy, and yet they continue to just be the little scrappy engine that could? A Dollar General, Ollie's Bargain Outlet, we were talking about them last show, pricing in a lot of extra juice. Now, let's see what we got out here. Let's see if it was merited. Dollar General, by the way, updated earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports. Hot off the presses as we speak from our friends over there at Orats. Head on over to the website if you want to check them out for yourself. Listen, I'm just going to touch on a few of them. There's literally hundreds of tickers for you to sink your teeth into for free because we like you. Uh, Dollar General, today before the bell, they are at 123.84 when they announced their earnings last night. They were pricing in 8.6%. Oh, they're coming for Dollar General today. We were kind of wondering. They are pricing in more juice. Was that enough? The answer was no. <laughs> they delivered 25.2%, and they're off nearly 30% now, so... Man, lighten dollars on fire in the dollar sector. They are coming for it today. We also have our old pal Best Buy listeners. Uh, they were pricing in 6.7%. Spoiler alert, they outperformed. They are delivering about 15% right now. So a banger out there for Best Buy. So out, outperforming in both directions. At the end of the day, once again, more vol was the answer. Now, Ollie's was also pricing in a little bit more juice as well. They were today before the bell. They were at about 94 bucks even. They're pricing in 6.3%. They delivered a little less than that, 5.4%. So close, close to their straddle. I'd, I would call that pretty much in line out there. And right now they're hanging out about 5.5%. So they're pretty close. So the more juice doesn't seem like it was merited out there. We know the deal with NVIDIA. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later for our question of the week. Five below, also playing obviously in that bargain sector. They're popping off yesterday after the bell. They are at about 79 bucks when we ran this, or excuse me, going into their announcement yesterday. When we ran the support this morning, they were at about almost 80. So they had moved a whopping 1%, and they were pricing in nearly 10% out there. So tale of different tapes across the bargain slash dollar sector out there today, which is kind of interesting. And let's get out of here on Salesforce. They were yesterday after the bell as well. 258.90 is where they were going into their announcement. They were pricing in nearly 8%. They delivered 0.7%. Oh, my goodness. And as of right now, they're only up half a percent. So Salesforce, the premium right of the season, at least right now. Wow. A whole heck of a a lot of nothing. Intriguing out there in good old CRM. 
you want to see all this for yourselves, listeners, of course, we got Lulu coming up next week, Marvel. So it's not done yet. Dick Sporting Goods. Still a bunch of tickers on the tape. You can check them out for yourselves, including the season report, which is still hanging out right now at very close to our long-term average. Our long-term average is 113%. We are hanging out right now, this cycle, 112%. But you can see all that for yourself. Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go. Meanwhile, we got to keep on going right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. listeners let's dive right on in and mr kevin i know you're you're swapping in for the flow master so if you have any fun flow you want to talk about as well you want to do your best flow master impression just let me know but i'm going to kick things off here with everyone's favorite uh this is octa inc ticker symbol okta octa (laughs) this is an identity and access management company based where else but san francisco uh trading about 81 bucks off over 15 bucks, nearly 16 bucks, about 16% to the dark side today. So folks not liking what they heard. Obviously, they just had earnings. They beat their Q2 sales targets, but obviously they said something the market didn't like because they are coming for it today. Let's see. On the year, you know what? Even with today's sell-off, they're still up. About nine bucks or about 12, almost 13% on the year. So, of course, today is not helping them. They were up substantially more, obviously. They're kind of giving a lot of it back now. They were about 71 bucks a year ago. They actually crushed them to their low shortly thereafter around Halloween, about 65 bucks. So, from that low, they're still up about 16 bucks right now. And, of course, the high came in March of about 114. So, from that high, this name's done a lot of living. Pretty much since that high in March, it's been mostly straight down and certainly just a, they tried to rally it recently, August going from about 83 bucks up to almost 199 last week. And then it just kind of fell off a cliff from there back to where it is right now, 81 bucks. So this name has had a lot of fits and starts throughout the year. Seems like uh, it's turning back to the dark side again today. But what do we spot out here today, listeners? Looks like somebody maybe thinks this latest brouhaha is a bit overdone somebody coming in and scooping 3500 of the october 82 half calls they paid two dollars and 60 cents this is pretty much a a penny off the offer they were two and a half bucks at 261 bit of a funky market there uh this was by the way right after their earnings i should point out and the next announcement is on november 27th so they don't get any extra earnings love with this trade it's decently juicy but not extreme it's a 33 vol compared to a lot of these dot com names we talk about you know those are triple digit vols this isn't isn't extreme volatility but nonetheless they're they're paying a bit for this one i don't know kevin i'm sure octa inc is is just a huge name you track all the time you get up in the morning you have your coffee you brush your teeth and then you fire up a quote on octa just like the rest of us sir what are your thoughts um yeah i mean it's uh you know, on the day we've got 32,000 calls versus 24,000 puts in Okta. So, you know, more calls than puts. Um, but, uh, I mean, the chart doesn't look great uh, overall, but we do have 6x the volume today. Um, you know, it is post earnings, it is a big move. Um, but yeah, there's, these near term calls are interesting. Um, hard to say if it's just a kind of a, you know, hold your finger up in the air and this is a rebound and it's overdone, but um, it better hang on here. Um, this is kind of the, 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 the most recent trend line that it's holding uh, from its most recent lows. So we'll see, um, but definitely a lot of volume in there today, no doubt. Um, and uh, it would be interesting to see how the, how the, how the follow through is tomorrow post earnings as it usually takes a couple of days for this implied volatility to shake out. Mr. Meatball, sir, are you loving just gobbling up some Oc 82 halves in your new favorite name, Octa, sir? Well, you know, it's, it's longer dated, so it makes some sense that they're hoping for a turnaround. You know, it's not, you know, your stock's not doing great. 
when you know people are buying kind of longer dated out of the money calls or they're closing puts that are worth more than ten dollars, which is mostly what we're seeing today. Yeah, bit of a uh, bit of a wild day out there. Let's keep rolling. If Okta isn't getting you excited, listeners, how about S bulk? <laughs> a lot of newcomers make it in into our into our odd block today. This is Star Bulk Carriers Corp. Ticker symbol S bulk S B L K. This is a a shipper out of Greece. Uh, trading twenty one thirty one up seventy cents or about three and a third percent today. So a good day for them today. Also a pretty good year for them. They're up about twenty two percent on the year. So take that, Nvidia. Shippers out of Greece. That's where the money is. Let's see. A year ago they were seventeen and a half bucks. They're up nearly four dollars, about three eighty on the year. Uh, they have come off their highs. Their high was. About 27 and a half bucks back in May. So they had a nice rally through May, a really nice rally, about $10, almost exactly. And then they, they've since given up a fair amount of that. Still looking good, but 2130 right now. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron spotted out here in S Bulk. This is great tickers today. <laughs> S Bulk, we have somebody trading 3,189 of the September 22 calls. So 70 cent out of the money calls, listeners. Uh, looks like looks like they probably bought these. The market was effectively a nickel at 40 cents. So <laughs> that's the market makers telling you they don't really want to make a market on this one. Pretty much no bid at 40. What do you want to do? Okay, we'll pay 35. That's what they did nearly 3,200 times. It's a 29 vol, so it's not onerous from that perspective. The stock was right about here when they bought these, 21 and a quarter. They also get no earnings. The earnings are on November 19th. So this just appears to be what it looks like on the surface. Somebody may be thinking this uh, this beating that they're giving to Star Bulk Car- easy for me to say Star Bulk Carriers Corp today is a bit overdone, and they're looking for a little bit of a turnaround in the near term. Kevin, I bet you didn't think when you came on the show today you'd be talking about your two favorites of Okta and now S Bulk, sir. What do you think? Yeah, these, that's a, this is another deep cut here, uh, S bulk. I have not ever looked at this thing, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I see almost more than seven thousand on the on the day in this uh, twenty two line in September. Um, certainly doesn't smell nice. Um, it's it's a pretty you know large trade versus the open interest in general. Um, I you know there's no earnings here. There's no real like reason to buy September. Um, so um, definitely warrants an, an investigation here and, uh, before getting involved, for sure. You know, it's a Greek shipper when they have on their website a quote from Archimedes. Give me a ship and I shall move the earth. <laughs> so, Mr. Mr. Meatball, are you too saying I shall pay 35 cents for some of those sweet, sweet S bulk SEP 22, sir? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, I, they're taking a shot. I guess that, you know. It makes some sense, but uh, no, not my, not my, not my bag. Yeah, we got some, got some fun ones creeping into, <laughs> into the odd block out here today. Uh, no flow master today, so let's pay off some of the names we were just talking about on the show recently, including last week, listeners. We were talking about everyone's favorite, uh, Bill Holdings. This is Bill.com, you know, online bill payment, all that fun out there. At the time, I won't tell you where the stock is just yet. Bit of a spoiler. On the year, a year ago, though, they were trading right around 115 to 120. So it's not been a great year. They're off about 50% from, from that level. But last week, we talked about somebody coming in and thinking, you know what? This beating we've seen in, in Bill is overdone. Uh, this was right before earnings. They came in, stock was 5160, and they scooped 3,638 of the AUG. 64 is these expired last week, the 23rd. So these were last week, last week trade. They paid about 50 cents for these. Remember, 64 strike listeners. They came back in, they liked it so much. They've got another 2008 also for 50 cents. And they kept going. A total of about 7,000 of these things traded on the day with the stock anywhere from 51 half to about 51 and three quarters. And they were really feeling their oats. They were pretty, they were actually, these were trading through the offer. The offer was 45 cents. And forty cents, and they were paying fifty cents repeatedly for these. So, all they really had to have these. They they didn't even pay the offer. They paid nickel to a dime through the offer to get calls that expired last week on the sixty four strike, 
And spoiler alert, listeners, these suck. These suck the second we talked about them. We said these don't look that great. And the stock's 55 bucks right now. It's actually had a little bit of a rally this week. It's up 4 bucks, or about 8% this week because it closed last week on expiration when it counts for these options, $47.34. So nearly $17 away from the strike that they needed, that they paid through the offer to get. Uh, this one, this one was just a screaming. It was a, almost a three hundred vol that they paid. None about nothing about this made sense. It just seemed like they were literally throwing money to the options gods, and that's pretty much what they did to the tune of two hundred and eighty thousand dollars on just the volume that we we noticed. If you add in all seven thousand, it's obviously even more. Uh, Mister Mister Kevin, I, I hate to to pull you into such a uh, just a debacle of a trade, sir, but somebody really had to have. These bill 64 is expiring last week and man, did they pay for it? Sir. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's what makes these trades so difficult is, is, you know, as they're happening and you're the trader responding to this, to this insane, the bid, you know, buyer, it, it's, it's uncomfortable, but as you saw here, I mean, it, he was wrong. So, um, you know, this insatiable buyer, whatever reason they had, um, you know, they just either they were wrong on timing um, or that, you know, it's just I mean, this isn't a, a huge market. I mean, they might they might have had to pay through just to get what they wanted on. Um, but again, I mean, that's where I think everything, you know, it's not to say that you don't participate when the volume you know, smells bad, but uh, you definitely do the homework. And uh, there's a lot of times where it's just. They're not correct. You know, I saw this in, in Nordstrom's. You know, there was a lot of call buying ahead of earnings. It looked suspect and it just didn't pan out uh, yesterday. So, you know, it, it's just, I think it's why you got to take it in a vacuum and really evaluate what are they paying for these options and does it make sense and, and, and really try to find out what their thesis is. So, their thesis was they really wanted to throw some money away on on <laughs> yeah, last week. They hate money. <laughs> they, they, the they clearly hated their money. Their, their wallet was too fat. They wanted to, <laughs> to thin it out a little bit. Mr. Meatball, same question for you. These people had to have these calls. I remember when we talked about them at the time, the strike was ridiculous. The price was ridiculous. The fact that they were paying a nickel to a dime through the offer routinely was ridiculous. All of it was ridiculous. The fact that it expired last week was ridiculous. This was a ridiculous trade from top to bottom. And go figure, it didn't work out, sir. What are your thoughts? Well, maybe they had something the other way with it or, you know, I, I don't know. But, you know, you'll see that with options a lot. Like, um, you know, uh, Kevin brought up uh, Nordstrom ahead of their earnings. Look at what was going on with Kohl's. They, you couldn't, you couldn't, traders could not buy as many, enough puts ahead of Kohl's earnings and the stock went up. Um, it's it's just sometimes these there, there's more to the story. Could have been longs hedging. Uh, maybe it's a maybe it was a short hedging, a near dated short hedging their position. Who knows? Um, that's why sometimes this paper is a lot more is not nearly as simple as we think it is. Look at you being charitable. If you're short, are you buying the 64s? <laughs> that's, a, that's a crappy edge. Maybe it's a hedge. <laughs> maybe it's just like a, a big, huge hedge. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. They really just uh, wanted to hedge themselves 13 handles above the market as a short seller. You know, that nice. I, I appreciate your effort to be charitable, sir. As we keep on rolling right on into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, let's do it. Let's get to your thoughts on a wide range of issues. Listeners, last week we asked you your thoughts on the DNC convention here in Chicago. It was obviously a big focus locally, but did it have a lot of grist for the mill for the markets and vol. We asked you that exact question. Do you expect it to move VIX and XPX or just a dog and pony show? 81% of you came down the right way, said, nope, just a dog and pony show. That was, of course, what, what it turned out to be. Only 19% thought it might have some material impact on the market. Fast forward to this week. Uh, we had a very timely question. We asked you at the beginning of the week, getting back to what the meatball was talking about. He said he was crunching some data on nvidia's earnings well we were doing so as well at the beginning of the week nvidia was pricing in about 12 and three quarters 
into movement of going into their announcement. That's that sounds probably like a lot, and that's because it is. In the past, we have data going back, obviously, a long time. Uh, we average it over the last 12 quarters, so the last three years. And the average movement they've delivered over that period is about 10 and a half bucks. So even in a very hot, spicy environment, they've only managed to deliver on average 10 and a half bucks. So 12 and three quarters, that was a spicy meatball. But we thought we'd put it to you folks, the ultimate arbiters at the end of the day. Is that too pricey, too cheap, or sounds about right? And interesting, a lot of you early on, well over half of you, when we posted this on Monday, were saying that sounds about right to you. You liked it. You were down for a little bit of, uh, of juicy, juicy vol on NVIDIA. As we got into and closer to the announcement yesterday, too pricey started really gaining steam. And that's pretty much where it went out, it looks like. Looks like it went out with, sounds about right, still winning it, but by a much smaller margin, 46.7% out there. Uh, too pricey fighting their way up, but couldn't quite take the top spot. 41.7%. They'll put up a good fight. And only 11.7%. I'm actually surprised it was that much, actually. 11.7% of you uh, said it was too cheap. You wanted to pay more for that NVIDIA straddle. Uh, Mr. Meatball, you were crunching your own data on NVIDIA straddles. What are your thoughts about our audience thinking that straddle sounded about right to them? And then a good chunk also saying it was way too pricey, sir. Uh, well, the people who thought that it was way too pricey were right. Turns out that was the case, sir. Uh, not a lot of not a lot of joy out there in Mudville for uh, the folks who wanted to pay twelve and three quarters out there. But let's get to let's get to a fun question here. He's been waiting patiently for an answer for a while. Let's go out to Milts, maybe M L T Z, however you want to pronounce it. He wants to know, perhaps she. Do you think it's viable to be an options-only trader and rarely or never touch the actual underlying stock? Interesting question. Uh, you are kind of talking to the choir here, Milt, so just, just bear that in mind. We do talk mostly about options, but we're not averse to a little bit of stock. A guy I know who likes playing with a little bit of stock, in particular his beloved Cisco, is the unclest of Mike's. He also likes a good Dollar General or two out there. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir... What do you have to say for our listeners? Let's just go with MLTZ. He wants to know, is it viable to be an options-only trader and rarely or never touch the actual underlying stock? I would say if you can silo it with your overall portfolio, then yeah, it can be. I've done it, and I think people on this show have done it. And so I think that if you're... Your entire net worth is long call options. Then I, I suppose you could do it, but just the the stress that would go along with that would be very difficult to do. But in terms of how you can silo your short term option trading and then have longer term investments in other areas. I, I definitely think it's viable. We, 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 we've kind of done this show for a th over a thousand times, so uh, I definitely think it's viable. Now, the question that comes up is that within that silo, can you do this without stocks? And I would say absolutely you can. Uh, I would say that a vast majority of the trades that I have made in my career have been on the S&P 500, whether it's SPX, SPY, or XSP for various clients or myself or for various situations. And I would definitely say that a vast majority of the short-term trades that I have made have been option only or something to where it had nothing to do with owning SPY. So is it viable? Absolutely. But I just want to add the side note to it. It can be viable. Let me rephrase that. It can be viable. Not that it is viable. It can be viable. And I think it's important to have the right silos in place for your finances to make sure that uh, you don't all of a sudden buy a bunch of out-of-the-money calls on, as you, as, you, as you recommended, Mark, Cisco or Dollar General, and then you're out of money. So viable, yes. Just make sure. Or viable, yes, it can be. Just make sure it's siloed well with your overall portfolio. Kevin, same question for you, sir. Is it viable to be an options-only guy, or do you have to play with stocks sometimes? 
you know, I'm not really, I think part of the question might be is, you know, are we trading just options or options with stock? And I guess the, the, the strategy kind of would imply that, you know, if I'm buying a, a near term straddle, am I going to modify my Delta exposure on that straddle by trading in options? Probably not. I would use stock in that instance because I want to keep my my options bet, and I just want to use the stock to scalp and exploit the gamma that I own. Um, but if you had some more, you know, PA quantified type trading where you have a call spread or you have a, a put spread or you have, you know, a defined risk reversal type trade, I think that that's a little bit different. Um, you know, anytime I'm in a, you know, where I want a scalp situation in gamma, I want to be able to have that freedom to, to use equity against my, my options to, to adjust. So, um, but you, yeah, you could certainly use options to instead of stock to adjust your portfolio, no doubt. Um, but uh, that's kind of how I've always trafficked myself. Mark, you get the final word on this question, sir. Options only or, or options and a little bit of stock? Uh, for trading, um, I would, you know, obviously I'm using SVIX now. But for trading, you could get away with just options. For investing, I think you want to use stock. It is a little harder to go longer term. You can do it, obviously. We've talked about it many times, different ways to do yeah. stock substitution and other ways about it. But it is a little bit more challenging to do the longer term uh, type trades and options. But it can be done out there. Who is that? MLTZ. Great question out there. As we keep on rolling, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, let's go around the block, see what everybody is keeping an eye on until our next show, which again, we are off on Monday, listeners. So let's go to uh, the Thursday show. Kevin, we'll start with you. Yeah, I'm just going to continue to watch how we uh, we continue to digest this uh you know, and NVIDIA earnings here, um, you know, I think the market was looking for that, that next leg higher. Um, we'll see if this is what it needed. Um, I think we'll know more next week on this. Um, there's just not a lot of volume today, tomorrow, Monday, to, or obviously not Monday, to, to confirm it. So I'm just looking for that next week. Yeah, not a lot of volume on Monday and no show on Monday as we keep going. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you. So what are you keeping an eye on until the Thursday show next week? I just wanted to see if I could maybe say my trademark saying about all-time highs in the market come Thursday. We are just a hop, skip and a jump away from all-time highs in the S&P. And then also watching uh, bonds actually very closely in that uh, if we're anticipating, is the rate cut, the, the the supposed rate cut factored into bond pricing yet? And uh, I'm just continuing to monitor that. And Mr. Meatball, last but not least, sir, what are you keeping an eye on till the Thursday show? Well, we've got uh, PCE on Friday, uh, and um, then I, we're basically through earnings. So I'd like to see what they do with um, the VIX for the next couple of days. Um, you know, it feels like it's really going to soften up, uh, but, you know, I'm watching that. And then... Uh, is Apple going to go to $4 trillion? That's, I think that's the next question. Well, if you had a question, is there more show? That music should answer it, listeners. There is no more show, at least for the option one. But never fear, listeners. I'll be back in a little bit. Holding court on all things futures options with our good buddy Dan, the man, Gramza, breaking down all things going on. What's, what's lighting it up today? Is it fluid milk? Is it a Bitcoin? Is it gold? Who knows? But you got to tune in to Twifo every week, listeners. But before we go, let's go around the horn. Let's start with Kevin, sir. If folks are intrigued, they want to check out all of this stuff we're talking about in SIBO for themselves, where should they go? What should they do? They should go to SIBO.com slash RMA, and you'll see um, all of the, uh, the various tools that we have to uh, trade options and manage the risk. There you go. Trade options, manage the risk, SIBO.com slash RMA. Check out the Flowmasters a blog post as well, Flex Appeal. We just really kind of skimmed the surface of it. A lot of great graphs and a lot of great visuals, as is the case with the Flowmaster usually. So if you want to see for yourself visually exactly how much flex volume has exploded, uh, that's the place to go. And Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, where should they go if they want a little bit of Uncle Mike goodness in their lives? 
A couple places. Check out me. Uh, check me out on Twitter at Mike Tusa T O S A W. Trying to put out as much content as I can, uh, including a webinar coming up on Tuesday night describing uh, reliving August fifth. And then uh, if you're looking for a financial advisor that uh, works in the options space, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. We'd love to have a conversation with you. And last but not least, Mr. Meatball, sir, where should folks go if they want a little bit of option pit you in their lives? Yeah, go to uh, follow me on Twitter at option pit and uh, you will find all kinds of great things there. There you go. Not just good things, listeners, but great things. Optionpit.com. The place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. You got to get out of here. If you're hanging out in the live hangout, I'll be back in a little bit to hold court on all things futures options. And then we're back again tomorrow, obviously, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. Talk a little bit of Vol. Who's going to be joining me on Vol Views? I guess you got to tune in to find out. And then after that, one final time for the week. Exclusively for our pro friends, we come back for a little bit of options, oddities, action. If you want to get access to that, you know where to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Then we're all off for Monday. Nice little respite. Rest my damaged vocal cords. And then we're back again with our usual array of content earlier in the week until we're back again next Thursday, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. <laughs>